Welcome to the first Sky e-reader retro e-reader review. We're going to be talking about older model e-readers that are on the market or maybe in your family collection. Maybe they're going to hand it off to you. They aren't a bad deal and we're going to discuss why. The bottom line is they all read books and they read them well. So that should not be an issue as far as processor speed or anything crazy like they like to hype up. So during this series we'll be talking about that and today we're going to start with an offering from Barnes & Noble. The Nook Color was Barnes & Noble's first color e-reading device. The Nook first edition may have had a small tiny touch screen that showed book covers on the very bottom in color, but this was the first full-on color screen on a Nook branded e-reader. It is not a full tablet that would follow later, but it was the beginning, and that when it was first released, the Nook Color plan promised much, but sadly did not deliver as much as promised. Nook owners quickly discovered that their new tablets had a few quirks to them. One of the most annoying of the quirks was the Nook Color's ability to obliterate its charging cable. It had shipped with a really intelligent looking charging cable that turned colors when it was charged, which seemed great. But something in the firmware, we were told, caused it to wear them out. You can charge your device with a micro USB cable, and that works pretty well, but it's slow. It also carried the promise of being able to read comics, which everyone thought was going to be amazing. You had to do a software update to do this, and it just it turned off the ability to sideload apps and app stores, etc. So you lost one thing to gain another. And for American comics, they work fine, but they are not the same size as a standard page, which means you're doing a lot of pinching and zooming. It can be done, but it's not the best. Comixology kind of took that market over. However, Japanese manga is about the same size as the screen and it reads really well on this screen. It's one of its real strengths. So if you like to collect manga, that works really well. You can also read, of course, books really well. It, you can just tap like you would any other e-reader and it loads them up and it works just fine. The Nook Color also can make a fantastic commuting tablet because you can load up your audiobooks that pop from LibriVox, something like that, because this tablet has a micro SD slot that the Kindle Fire of the same generation did not. You can sideload all you want and listen to them on your way to work. And you can also, if you really are a pro user, you can remove the operating system and sideload one of your own. There is a flavor of Android designed specifically for Nook Colors. Bear in mind if your Nook Color it was still under warranty or is still under warranty under an extension or something, it will void it because you are replacing the operating system. As you can see on the back, there's a small speaker area. This little corner here that says Nook. If you pop it open, it's kind of tricky, pop it up, there is a micro SD slot there. You can see it right there. Put one of those in and load, side load all you want. It has micro USB on the bottom and it has a headphone jack on the top. So your standard headphones, you don't need anything fancy or proprietary to listen to your stuff. The Nook Color has Wi-Fi and can surf the web in a limited way. And so if you are somewhere you can connect to the internet and read, may read your news, whatever. I mean, you can also get newspapers and magazines delivered to the device through Barnes & Noble. So that is an, also an option. Mm -hmm. 
Alrighty guys, now that we're outside, I'm going to demonstrate the usefulness of the Nook Color by taking it with me on a little trip to the Bull Run Archery Range. So I'm going to have my arrows here, my tools here, which are important because it's got my glove and arm guard, and my tape down bow. Is there anything else I need for my trip? Let's see. Got my uh, equipment here, got my Nook Color, and I have my English breakfast tea. Just remember guys, there is more to life than coffee. Now that we're all set, let's get going. Now that we're in the car, it's time to set up the, uh, iP the Nook Color. Now some people would say you can use your iPod or iPhone can to carry music, and you can. But for uh, something that you're going to be changing frequently and managing, I find it easier to deal with podcasts and audiobooks by dragging and dropping the files into the iPod, or the, sorry, the SD card, then trying to keep up with them in iTunes. iTunes really isn't designed for that type of integration and work. So I'm going to open up my Nook color here. I have the audio already pulled up, so I'm just going to click, so I'm going to listen to The Red Panda, one of my favorite podcasts. I read the books as well. Plug it in here, with your headphone jack. Turn on your radio. To turn it to your aux position. Most new modern cars have this, the, the input jack. I'm just going to press the Red Panda Adventures. Click on that. And we're ready to go. Now that I've arrived at the archery range, I may want to pick, catch up on a few pointers. And my Nook Color can help me there too. I will pick it up. I'll hook it from my stereo. And I will click on my copy of Primitive Archer magazine, and this way I can catch up on anything I might have missed out on since I haven't been shooting in a while.